Hi mates, I just got back from Copenhagen and the Food Proteins Europe conference. Since many of you ask her a cup, uh, there it is. The event was amazing, more than 100 people, many decision makers, many speeches uh, very interesting about innovation in the food ingredient sectors and about insects. But about the insects, as you might know, we still we are still waiting for the novel food approval from the Commission. At the moment, nothing can be marketed for food use in Europe. My speech was about labeling and I examined a bit the situation for uh, milk related terms and meat related terms in Europe but also in US and Canada so I spoke about uh, the tough town case of the Court of Justice which basically stated that in Europe milk regulated and related terms cannot be used for plant-based alternatives so terms like milk, cheese, butter, yogurt, kefir cannot be used for the plant-based analogs since there are legal definitions that state that milk is the product of mammals, of an animals, and uh, the derivatives come from milk. Uh, there is a decision from 2010 from the European Commission with uh, a list of names that are not subject to such restrictions, like for instance coconut milk or almond milk in many countries, but this list is provided by, by countries. So the countries where a term was traditional um, sent to the Commission there, 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 a list of terms that shall not be uh, prohibited under the current regulation. Uh, so these are basically the exception, but has to be evaluated case by case. So uh, about the milk term, the situation is pretty clear, at least from a legal standpoint, because for competition issues, the uh, Court of Justice uh, stress that where there is a regulated term cannot be used for uh, different products. Okay, you have to follow the rules established in, in the law or otherwise you have to change your name. On midterms, on the contrary, the game is still to play. In spring, uh, some members of the European Parliament table a proposal to consider terms like sausage or burger, customary terms under Article 17 of our food labeling regulation and customary terms reserved and linked only to meat products. So prohibiting again to plant-based alternatives to use to use such term. Uh, now, as you might know, we don't have a commission in Brussels. They are struggling a bit in uh, forming the new one. So many dossiers are a bit, a bit still. We will see what will happen in future and if this proposal will move on into the European Parliament and will be voted by, by the plenary session. But at the moment, we cannot, we cannot say more. Of course, many uh, people say this is an attempt of the meat sector to protect their market. It's a lobbying uh, issue. Yes, of course it is, as it's natural. Anybody's trying to protect their own market quotas. But in my opinion, again, it's not uh, so much a problem uh, of misleading consumers here. It's a problem of competition because nobody can be really fooled by a label that state 100% plant-based cheese or almond milk. It's clear that it's not, it's not the, the, the milk as we intend traditionally, you know, such product. It's interesting to note, by the way, that also in US and Canada, we had similar trends. In US, milk terms are regulated. In Canada, milk terms are regulated. So we have the same exact problem. On meat terms, the situation is is different. For instance, in US, most of them are not regulated. So again, state law is coming in, jumping in and imposing sanctions to the one that are using midterms on plant-based alternative. We have a Missouri law, we have an Arkansas law, we have a Mississippi law, and all of them are providing fines. And in Missouri, also one year of jail that is a bit excessive to violators. All this law has been challenged by the plant-based sector, so a company called Tofurki is one of the main players, together with, with the sectorial association. And uh, they are not uh, applicable at the moment, but there is a rising trend also in the US against uh, the use of meat terms on plant-based alternatives. In Canada, on the contrary, we had an opening since we had a Blue Heron case where a small cheesemaker was initially um, prohibited to use uh, milk terms on, on plant-based cheese, but then uh, was allowed by the Canadian Food Inspection Agency to keep on 
with uh, this practice provided that um, qualifiers, very clear qualifiers are used in the name of the food. So basically the authority said that if you call a product 100% plant-based cheese and it's clear for consumers that that is not cheese from milk but it's plant-based, you still can use such names. We will see also in this case the developments. It's all subject to interpretation, of course. But again, I would like to stress that this is a competition issue, not really a mislabeling issue, because nobody can be fooled by a term like that. And not, the, let's say, the average consumers that is reading at least uh, the front of back of the label and is looking at what is buying. Uh, there is a competition issue. There is a strong fight against the two sectors. But my point at the conference was that uh, these lobby attempts, um, absolutely legitimate from both sides, are pointless in the sense that here we have a marketing problem. We have a meat sector that is losing credibility because it's attacked from many par sides. As has been said, it is not sustainable, it's not clean, and they had many frauds in the past, so they had to uh, clean the image. They have to do a huge marketing efforts in re-establishing the meat sector as a trusted sector, as a strong sector. And this will not be achieved simply prohibiting to the plant-based competitors to use terms like burgers or sausage. The um, effort has to be uh, deeper. Uh, on the other side, I would like to see really the plant-based sector innovate, make something bold, make something different. Why you have to mimic the meat terms and call your product sausage? Try to do something different, shape it differently. That's not a sausage, that's plant-based alternative. That's something for consumers that want to eat uh, meatless. So why you have to mimic meatless? It's not clear to me. Um, it's true that on a first, uh, in the first moment, it's much more easy to sell to consumers something that is known and in a shape that is very well known. But in my opinion, also the plant-based sector has to move on from this lobby and pass and uh, think uh, what will come forward. Uh, thank you for your attention as usual. I'll head to Brussels now for the next conference, the European Food and Feed Law. Conference by Lexion. I will speak about the uh, origin of the primary ingredient regulation and I'll let you know more in future. Bye bye.